Welcome to the Sylvania Wilderness, 18,000 acres of old growth forest nestled in the Ottawa National Forest in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, containing 34 named lakes, abundant wildlife, and of course, outstanding fishing. This trip, or a trip like it, has been a long time coming, and this summer I found myself with the opportunity to finally go. All right, we're getting into the first day of my three-day venture here into the Sylvania wilderness. So I'm starting out, I'm on Crooked Lake right now, which is one of the main entrance points. Uh, heading south, right toward the border of Michigan and Wisconsin. The interesting thing is where it falls, this area, it's kind of right on the boundary of the Lake Superior watershed and the Mississippi River watershed uh, via the Wisconsin River. So pretty high terrain, not really any rivers or creeks. Uh, they say the water only flows out from here. It doesn't come in. I'm not very far into my first lake here and the rain is starting to come down pretty heavy. Um, I was getting worried about my my phone here and my GoPro, so I'm hanging out under a, a cedar tree and a big white pine. All right, if you're a plant expert, correct me if I'm wrong, but Eurasian water milfoil. It's an invasive plant, kind of chokes out um, native species and can totally just infest a lake. Um, I actually met a guy working at the boat landing here who told me that it was in this lake and was just kind of asking questions. You know, where's the last place I had my canoe? Um, you know, just to kind of watch out for it. Um, that sort of thing, so. I don't know how well you can see these, these mats underwater. That one's pretty good. This is all that Eurasian water milfoil you can see how this could really, really mess up a lake. <laughs> I hooked into a big old bass here in the lily pads. I've got no idea how I'm going to land it. <laughs> I saw something jump here. Sounded like a beaver. Boy, it's hard to pull him through the lily pads here. Here it is, okay. Come on. I'm going across. Oh, geez. Oh, nice bass. Okay, carefully. Oh, oh. Carefully. Carefully. Oh. Oh, that is a nice largemouth. Wow, biggest largemouth I've ever caught. I know that. There he goes. Well, that was fun. Well, the weather got better. Um, the sun is peeking back out. Kind of a light breeze. I'm on the far southern arm here of Crooked Lake. Um, fishing has not been that good. I've uh, 
pretty much only had the one fish. I had a few follows uh, a couple minutes ago. I was casting a spinner, and it looked like some kind of some small bluegills. So I'm just making my way over to the portage to Mountain Lake. And well, I have my first and only portage coming up here, and I'm told it's short enough that you can actually see the other lake. Uh, from here. So this is close enough. I'm gonna try. <sighs> try and uh, single carry, as they say. Even though I'm not carrying. Dragging. It's so short. You can see it right behind me there. All right, very short portage. I just left everything in the canoe. I don't know, this is probably 10 feet higher than the last lake. Very clear. Not positive if this is the correct landing, but I believe this is my site somewhere somewhere over here. So we have another little pond here. I'm not quite sure how to say its name. Lilouis Lake or something. And maybe I overshot site should be up here somewhere on the map it shows it kind of right at the head of this pond check out these shelf fungi my gosh I'm not super familiar with those I know there's one uh, that's called the common name it's stake of the woods but I don't know I don't know enough about them to try and eat it. Oh, there's my landing. I think this is it. So I'm assuming the tent goes right there. Heck of a view. So this is the landing I actually was supposed to come to. So I guess I'm gonna go hop in the canoe and bring it back around over here. Since I'm only coming here for two nights, I, uh, I packed a very small cooler with a couple of cold things. Um, so tonight we got smoked brats, um, and I just have some veggies for tomorrow's dinner that uh, just need to stay cold-ish. This was my first time doing a leave-behind trip where you leave everything in your vehicle and take what you need and um, have to pack efficiently. That was... It was a new challenge for me, because even though I've done lots of rustic camping, it's usually, oh, I think I'll need that, throw it in the truck, and it'll be there if I need it. But this is a little bit more, you have to think a little bit more to do this. This trip almost didn't happen. I had really one window all summer long to make a two-night solo trip work and I should preface by saying I'm fortunate lucky to be able to do trips like this at all but I kind of felt pressured to 
pick like the perfect destination uh, knowing I only really had one shot all summer to do a trip like this um, you know of course I've been out quite a bit um, camping with the family and just going out and doing a little bit of fishing here and there and paddling but I really wanted to do my first leave behind you know wilderness trip this summer and kind of last minute I decided to come to Sylvania. I've heard a lot of great things about it and this is just an area that I have not explored much at all. This whole kind of western part of the Upper Peninsula here. Heading out for a paddle around Mountain Lake. Oh yeah, here's a bass. <laughs> Come on. That's so much fun. Let me hit the top water. That's a fighter. He's not huge. That's a good size. Oh, smack right in the canoe. Large mouth. Ow! Doggone it. Hit but didn't take. Alright, trolling along here. Got something. Oh, you're not even that big, dude. Come on, give it up. Give it up. Hey. <laughs> that thing fought like heck for its size. That's the smallest bass I caught today. Jeez. Time to kick back and enjoy a fire for a little while anyway. I didn't put a lot of effort into collecting wood tonight. But uh, there's quite a bit of down stuff here without having to go too far. And I'm gonna sip on a little bit of peach bourbon. So one of the rules with the wilderness here is you can't bring uh, cans 
or glass bottles. So everything has to come in a plastic container um, that you bring in and pack out. So <laughs> I have my There's a lot of loons here. Cheers to a great day. I found a book I'm really enjoying and I saw it um, while watching um, John from Lost Lakes, um, his Quetico video. And this book is by um, Sigurd F. Olson. It's called The Singing Wilderness. And it it's just, it's, it's always fun when you find a book that puts into words things you've already been thinking and part of me feels like I'm just just kind of experiencing a lot of this stuff for the first time that for a lot of people even in a place like Sylvania here you know this is old news but I feel like I'm kind of discovering this all for myself for the first time but he writes in this chapter called the way of a canoe he says the movement of a canoe is like a reed in the wind Silence is part of it, and the sounds of lapping water, bird songs, and wind in the trees. It is part of the medium through which it floats. The sky, the water, the shores. A man is part of his canoe, and therefore, part of all it knows. Well, he there, little guy. Oh, he's a big chonker. Oh, I was going to give him a boop. Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. started with day two so yesterday I started up way up here on Crooked Lake and came all the way down through these really narrow sections and then I just had that one portage right there and then that's my campsite so today I think I'm actually gonna try to follow this blue route so I'm going to go back over to Crooked, do this portage to Clark Lake, down to Loon Lake, to Deer Island Lake, and back. So this whole area, Sylvania Wilderness, um, was formerly a private hunting and fishing retreat, kind of in the same vein as... Um, the history of, of Craig Lake State Park. In the 60s, the Forest Service acquired the land and then it was designated in 1987 as a federal wilderness. So, um, in, when I was checking in at the um, entrance station yesterday, the ranger I spoke with was um, kind of pointing out some spots on the map and there's, I guess there's an area near one of the trails I'm going to be port portaging, portaging, portaging over today um, where there's some open, kind of open fields, I guess, where the buildings used to be for the old um, Sylvania Club. This is uh, 
going to sound crazy, but I'm not a huge breakfast person. And so coming on a trip like this, I just didn't want to go through the effort of packing typical breakfast food or, you know, dehydrated eggs or anything. So granola it is. Coming up to my first portage of the day. This is gonna take me over to Clark Lake. I don't know if I'm gonna spend a lot of time there, but I did bring stuff to fish for lake trout, and I know this lake has lake trout in it. I'm gonna hike all my stuff over first, come back for the canoe. So I think I found one of the clearings here where some of the buildings for the old Sylvania Club used to be. And there's a bunch of raspberries. I made it to Clark Lake and it's windy as heck over here. Nice sandy beach. This one's gonna be kind of a beast to paddle. So I tried to put this thing on my shoulders. It has that that bar for picking it up and it flipped off and landed like this so reverting to dragging so is portage the verb like portage a canoe i'm gonna portage a canoe across this trail and portage is the noun like this is the portage Clark Lake. Okay. <laughs> So I think I actually have a lake trout on. I had, oh God. <laughs> and I caught my other line. I had no idea, it like wasn't, the rod wasn't really doing anything. I wanna take it easy because it's catch and release with these guys unless they're 30 inches. And this ain't a 30 incher and I wouldn't wanna keep a 30 incher anyway, so. Sea diver, moonshine spoon. I'm gonna have to net him. Well, you know what? Screw the net. Just get him over here real quick. Get you back in here. Real quick. Okay. Oh, 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 and he's off. That's okay. Hopefully, I caught some of them. I'm working on the portage into Loon Lake, and so far it's been very steep. So as I walk by these clearings where the buildings for the Sylvania Club used to be 100 years ago, I um, think a lot about whether or not exclusive clubs like that have a role 
or should exist. I'm of the opinion, I think, that water should always have public access. I guess unless it's maybe a really small pond or something. When you open up, when you open up areas to the public, it's a double-edged sword because yeah, there's access for all, and maybe that's how it should be. But um, you have to deal with the effects of having it open to everybody. Things like introducing invasive species to an area, or leaving trash, or being irresponsible with fires, or depleting a fishery. So I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I think a lot about it though. Made it to Loon Lake and it's much calmer here. There's a nice little beach. Might have to stop here for a swim later. It's really cool seeing the color differences in each of these lakes. This lake, Loon Lake, is almost blue. Don't quote me on this, but I think that we are in the Wisconsin River watershed now. So, Mississippi River. This portage was pretty hard to find. It's tucked in around this point and it's in a different spot than what it shows on the map. We made it. So I will say even though the portages, portages aren't marked, they're maintained really well. We made it to Deer Island Lake kind of far uh, south into the wilderness here. Here we go. I think I finally got a bass here. Deer Island. I saw a bunch of them. They were really spooky. And I cast it to them and they wouldn't, they wouldn't take anything I was casting. So I'm trolling the bottom bouncer now. That thing really put on a show. Well, we had a bass on here. I was just reeling in to try some casting in this little bay. And my rod started going crazy. But it fell off. Oh, maybe it's back. Oh, something's back. Oh yeah. Come on. some weight to it. Oh, that's a nice smallmouth. There we go. <laughs> nice smallie. Spinner bait here. Oh no, did it fall off? Oh my gosh. Oh, and it made a lunge for it at the end. My gosh, how did I lose that? <laughs> oh man. This one hit like a top water. I got the spinner bait on. Holy crap, there's a whole bunch of big bass in this hole here. Oh, he's bringing me into the sticks. Oh, come on. <laughs> ah! Oh, he's got me in the sticks. Come on. Come on. Oh, there's a good one. 
look at that thing. Let's see, probably, I don't know, 16 inches, 18 inches. What a fighter. Oh gosh, okay, I have a double. Oh. <laughs> okay. Casting out one side, trolling out the other side. One's still here. Maybe. It's hard to tell. Think so? Oh yeah. Boy, this one's really got some weight to it. That's what I've said about all of them. Uh-oh, did it fall off? Did I lose him? Is he just swimming toward me? Oh, he was swimming toward me. <laughs> He's here? There he is. On the one. There we go. Look at that. Good clockwork. I put the line back in the water, another one hits. I didn't even get the trolling rod hardly back in the water. We got another one on. Put on a fresh power bait crawler. I never thought I could have this much fun bass fishing. <laughs> Look how little. That's like one of the little ones. And it's still fought like a beast. All right, get him on his way. Another, another little one. How does a 12 inch bass fight harder than like that lake trout I caught earlier? All right, I'll give it a rest on the fishing for a bit. It's lunch time. So the Seek app, which is not <clears throat> a great app for identifying fungi, tells me this is a candle snuff fungus. So I ran out of water. I have more at my campsite, but I ran out of the stuff I packed with me today. So time for a drink. Maybe not. All right, and at the 11th hour, we got a fish on at Loon Lake, like 200 feet before I get to the beach. I have no idea what it is. It's, I've been <laughs> on the bottom, out in the middle. So, yeah, it's a smally, not a very big one either, but a scrappy one. He's off. Well, you didn't get to see him, but he wasn't much to look at. Well, so I finally got this thing working. Just a nice drink of lake water here. It's amazing, this thing. It literally makes it taste like nothing. Like not even, not even like spring water. It tastes... I don't know, it tastes like distilled water. Just no flavor. It's it's good. There's no hint of... Well, you know what lake water tastes like, if you've ever been swimming. Somehow, when this thing wasn't working before, it made me become, like, ten times thirstier, so glad I figured it out.
storm does. It's kind of going that way, but I beached the canoe here in case I have to run for cover. Ten minutes later, there's still some rumbles in the distance, but the sun's coming back out over here. I thought it was dawn, but evidently that wasn't the case. The sky got real light, sun came back out, rain stopped, started paddling again, and started lightning and thunder, lightninging and thundering again. And now it's downpouring. This has been a really brutal portage because it's my last one of the day, so I'm tired. Um, every time I stop, I'm swarmed by mosquitoes. Bug spray doesn't seem to be helping. The storm seems to have enlivened them. On the other hand, I did find a piece of rope just along the trail and a stick, and that's made carrying this way easier. The storms actually seem to be gone now, and the lake's been flat calm. As bad as the portage was, paddling back across Crooked has been really nice. Alright, we got ramen and naan for dinner. No fish, but that's okay. Um... The bugs have mysteriously disappeared, unless it's just my thermocell over there. Otherwise, I'm going to eat some dinner and probably skip a fire tonight. Everything's soaking wet anyway from that thunderstorm, and probably going to be an early night in the tent because I'm exhausted. Packing up camp it was a beautiful night. I kind of had a hard time falling asleep, but once I fell asleep, I slept good and uh, slept in a little bit. So, this is it. Um, there's another lake, and I think the portage is like three quarters of a mile one way back from the start of this lake. And I really thought hard about doing it today but I don't know if I have it in me to drag all this um, that far and then there's one more portage to come back to Crooked Lake where I'm where I started so I think I'm just gonna follow my regular route back out so I'm back at the portage to Crooked Lake portage
This is the trail to High Lake. Really thought about doing that, but it's too far. I'm tired, and this canoe is hard to carry. But High Lake has bass, and then there's supposed to be like a remnant lake trout population. <clears throat> I've read a little about lake trout being in there. Um, would be a cool lake to fish sometime, but I guess not today. Wondering if there's a word for that satisfaction you feel when you're pushing off in your canoe or kayak and like the moment when you're still kind of dragging the bottom when all of a sudden you just start floating and gliding. <laughs>